and Linda Kirby. I've been coming to the Tron for well over 30 years. Through my teenage years, I was definitely lost, broken home and all that stuff. And I was aware that as a young person, we were without direction, morally and spiritually, but I had no idea how to, what to do about it. But I totally went off the rails, maybe late teens, early 20s. It was the 60s, sex, drugs, rock and roll, all that free love, free shake off the shackles. Not that there were any shackles in me, restrictions, but that kind of was a big influence in my life. Well, because it was the 60s and I was down south, um, I eventually ended up in Brighton. It wasn't for too long, but I get caught, I get caught in with the crowd, the beach crowd, hippies. <laughs> you know, there was a degree of drug taking. When you were at the beach at night, sometimes on a Sunday night, you got people coming down and they'd be reading bits of the Bible, singing, handing out sandwiches, and that really, that's what attracts you, is this. And I, I was, what I was impressed with was why respectable people would take time with this kind of scene. Anyway, I, did, I stuck that for so long and then I got homesick, got real homesick, and I'd lost contact with my family. So it was a big step to come back. So I saved up the money to come back. But I managed to get a job in, an, in Glasgow School of Art. It was artist model. So obviously you had to go and meet the students. <laughs> you got to know them and invite you to different things. But I was involved in a few incidents and there were certain people who were willing to help me or speak to me. And I discovered through one thing after another, they were Christians. And I was aware of a genuineness about these, this wee crowd. We were asking a lot of questions and the boy, the main boy that spoke to me, he said, and I, again, I appreciated his honesty. He says, Linda, I'm out of my depth here, but can I get someone, a female to speak to you? And I said, okay. Right away, he arranged to get this friend to speak to me. And she was, you know, there was no uh, beating about the bush. She took me right back to Genesis, told me how it all began, why I was in the position I'm in, this is what it is, this is what sin is, and this is what you have to do about it. She just was right down the line, this is it, and you've got to make this decision. Of course, I was in tears and I couldn't see anything. And she said to me, when you go home, you need to get on your knees and tell God you're sorry for everything and ask for his forgiveness. And he will help you. Of course, I was thinking, will an angel appear with a light? You know, all this stuff. I, but she said, can I say a prayer for you? So she did that. I'm sorry for all the wrong things in my life. Please come and cleanse me, make me whole. The, the words that I needed to hear, and I did, I echoed it with her. I think God's hand was in my life all along, but it was just, took time. I know now I'm not looking to satisfy any need in me now, because I know that I'm in God's hands. I read this morning, you know, that Jesus paid the price, and that my sin has gone, and that is amazing, actually, isn't it? I know.